All right, we've got an exciting guest for you guys uh, today. We had an exciting election last night. Uh, Adam Green is with the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Uh, and uh, obviously they were tracking this election and they backed progressive candidates. So uh, very interested to see what his take on this is. Obviously everybody's got different range of opinions as to what happened last night. Adam, welcome back to the show. Hey, good to be here. All right, so uh, you know we've got a lot of variety of uh, different outcomes, right? In different states, different candidates, Republicans have won some, Democrats have won some. Uh, overall Democrats hold better than we expected. What's your main takeaway? Well, I start off um, with a sigh of relief that I think democracy got two year lease on life after last night's election, fingers crossed. Um, but you know, it was not supposed to be close. And I think a lot of the pundits got it wrong with a lot of stuff they were saying on the front end. You know, I don't think this was an election about gas prices. It was not an election about any one issue or any one person. It really seemed like what we witnessed on Tuesday was this organic uprising by people who just saw their fundamental rights being taken away by this extremist Republican Party. And you know, I think some Democrats are giving the Democratic establishment too much credit here, um, where what we really saw were voters saying, we don't know what we think about Democrats, but we know for sure they're the only party that gives us a hope to advance democracy rights, mm. uh, economic rights, abortion rights, and just the right to exist on this planet. So that's that's my starting point, just that this was kind of a like white blood cells attacking something. Like it was regular people rising up, giving Democrats a two year shot to do a little better. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that as you were talking, the thing I realized was that these midterm elections really broke with the the paradigm that indicates that midterms usually work against the party that's in charge. And to some extent, some of these elections did work against Democrats, right? There's still a pretty good chance that Republicans will take control of the House. Uh, less likely with the Senate, but that's still up in the air as well. But nonetheless, Democrats didn't lose as much as we expected them to. And to me, that really does communicate that the lunacy of the extremist wing of the Republican Party did scare voters into to getting active, <laughs> showing up to the polls to make their voices heard. And I even I underestimated how much the rollback of abortion rights would impact this election to, to the you know, favor of Democrats, right? We saw a little bit of an uptick in their polling after the reversal of Roe, but then that kind of started to taper off as we got closer to the midterm. So I was kind of thinking it's not gonna have that much of an impact, but what's your read on that? Do you think that that one issue really did help the Democrats avoid losing as much as we expected them to? I think that that issue put a lot of energy behind Democrats. But I don't think a lot of people who came to the polls were only voting on that one issue. Again, I think it was this gut level, visceral sense that a whole swirl of fundamental rights were being taken away with that being among the most prominent, right? But I mean, we're having a democracy crisis right right now, whatever that means to individual people, whether it's the fact that when there's a school shooting, there's no conceivable way to pass a gun law, mm. whether it's these people that live in districts where they their vote doesn't really matter <laughs> because it's an 80-20 district one way or another. Or there's the Supreme Court going on a rampage against other fundamental rights. I mean, so many things just seem wrong that I think a lot of people just came out of the woodwork to fight back. And abortion was one of the main kind of juicing factors. You know, one of the things that things that I've been kind of getting prepared for this last week were the knives to come out for progressives after the election, mm -hmm. which happens every single year, yep. right? And you know, yep. win win or lose, somehow something is progressives' fault. And I do think that. The deck got scrambled a little bit yesterday, um, and the good news is that progressives aren't getting as attacked today. <laughs> Maybe they're waiting for for tomorrow as they get their ducks in a row. But I do think that there's almost an overly congratulatory, self congratulatory sense among establishment Democrats that oh, because we did better than expected, somehow that means we did everything right the last two years. Part of our message is no, like despite the fact that corporate Democrats delayed the centerpiece economic agenda for a year mm -hmm. so that it wasn't being felt by voters by election day. And despite the fact that we went too small on too many issues, we nonetheless happened to do well because good people came out to vote. But again, I would frame it as a two year lease on life. They've trusted the Democratic Party to right the ship, to go bolder faster. 
And now the question is, will the Democratic Party get the right lesson? Or will we you know, have a push back to austerity times or just in a minimalist direction? Hopefully not. Yeah, Adam, I think it breaks down for the Democrats into two different issues, right? So there's the democracy and abortion that they ran on for most of the campaign. So I think it is, my take on it is that it's fair to give them credit for that because those did seem to make a difference, especially when they were running against the more mentally unstable Trump candidates, right? There, that's where the democracy message really resonated, right? Um, so because they were running against election deniers, etc. On the other hand, if the lesson that they take away is, hey, on the economy and, and other issues that affect everyday America's lives, we nailed it. Well, if that was true, wouldn't they have won in Nevada? And you know that was a very standard standard Republican versus standard Democrat race, and it looks like they're, the Democrats are going to lose. And that was their incumbent, so they should have held on to it if they had done well. And then you've got uh, Beto O'Rourke, Stacey Abrams, and every race has its own dynamic. But in a lot of places where they ran standard Democrats without the help of uh, you know a reality denying candidate on the other side, they didn't do that well. Yeah, I mean, you're naming some of the high profile ones. There were, I mean, if you, you know, watch Steve Kornacki and MSNBC, there's all these races that you've probably never heard of where random Democrats are winning seats and random Republicans are losing seats. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's as cut and dry as what you're saying, but I think you're right that, you know, the more that they have absolute crazy people on the ballot, it seems to have been responded to by, by voters. All I'm saying is that I don't want Democrats to get the wrong lesson. You know, I guess there is a distinction between messaging and doing stuff, right? So, you know, was the Democratic messaging perfect on abortion since the Dobbs leak and the Dobbs decision? I don't really think so. I mean, honestly, it took the White House a while to even talk about it. Mm -hmm. And there could have been a bunch of votes in the Senate to make contraception, contraception the law of the land, uh, do other things that would have been logical extensions of what just happened in the Supreme Court case that wasn't done and didn't really keep abortion front burner. And then to Anna, Anna's point, we kind of saw abortion recede from the news and you know, it looked like it might not be a motivating factor for voters. Well, luckily it was enough. But will Democrats, you know, kind of rest on the messaging that we got kind of right up until now, or will we be bolder? Um, and I don't know the answer to that. But our hope is that, you know, that again, I, if you just look around Democratic establishment talking point world, like there's a lot of self congratulatory stuff going on right now that yes. worries me because that, that's a signal that we just won't be doing enough and we need to get a lot more done, right? Do we go? Do we go smaller? Or do we go bigger, faster? And I'm in the second camp, obviously. Well, Adam, I just want to touch on the data for progress polling that came out yesterday, right? So talk yeah. to us about how Social Security polled, minimum wage polled, these economic issues, and how much better the Democrats could have done in places like Nevada if they'd run on those issues. Yeah, so this is interesting. So there were so many things kind of, again, ducks that progressives were getting in a row to make sure that we had strong responses to the inevitable corporate Democrat attacks after the election. And we commissioned two polls, the Progressive Change Institute, basically asking people first, what's your top priority as you vote? And then for the people who said inflation was their top priority, we said, okay, here's a bunch of things that have been proposed to deal with inflation. Which ones do you support? Which ones do you oppose? One of the things that we asked was, okay, some people say we should cut Social Security as a solution to inflation, to take money out of the economy. Well, surprise, surprise, by 15 to 1, the inflation voters said, no, 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 that's not what I mean when I'm voting on inflation. When we asked them, oh, okay, should we increase Social Security benefits to keep up with the rising cost of inflation? By nearly 10 to 1, they were like, yes, we want more money, mm -hmm. right? Should we increase the minimum wage by huge margins? Yes. Should we crack down on corporate price gougers by huge margins? Yes. So again, a lot of this was intended to play defense because there are really people out there. I mean. I'll tell you, Stephanie Rule on MSNBC, a former Wall Street person, I'll never forget a few months ago, she said, Joe Biden and Democrats are trying to raise worker wages. Don't they know that contributes to inflation, right? And for me, that was just a moment where it was like, wow, we're having two very different conversations in this country. Mm -hmm. But the Joe Manchin types really believe we should take money out of the economy, which means stop helping people. So our data pretty much says no. Even the people who prioritize that issue going into the poll, polling, they the you know the polling places they want more money in their pockets. And I agree with you. You know, if people like Catherine Cortez Masto were more robust in standing for that proposition, we'd likely likely get more working people on our side, and likely fewer polls would say that Republicans can be trusted more on the economy, which is crazy.
I wanna read a statement from Joe Biden today. Here's what he said about the outcome of the midterm election so far. He said, voters spoke clearly about their concerns, about raising costs, rising costs, the rising costs that they're in, and they need to get inflation down. There's still a lot of people hurting, they're concerned, and it's about crime and public safety. They send a clear message that they want to preserve our democracy and protect the right to choose in this country. So, you know, he very briefly mentioned other issues that seem to poll as a priority for voters as we got closer to the midterms, crime being one of them. As we know, Republicans really leaned into crime narratives to, to try to win some of these races. It worked in some cases, didn't work in others. I'm curious what you think about the Democrats messaging on crime and public safety. How long do you have? Uh, I mean, on this issue all day, because <laughs> I, I obviously have my own thoughts, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. I mean, I, I don't, I think there's a lot of room for Democrats to do better on this. I mm -hmm. mean, honestly, I thought Barack Obama did the best retort that I saw when he was in Georgia and pretty much said, look, violent crime is up, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been going up for two years, it's been going up for seven years. Mm -hmm. It's not just in liberal states, it's in rural conservative states. And the question isn't, is it going up? The question is, who do you trust to seriously take it on? And he pointed to Herschel Walker and said, do you trust some guy going around with a fake badge playing cops and robbers? Yeah. Which I thought was just a good way of handling it. You no, know, acknowledge. Adam, I, I, I hadn't seen that no. and that is exactly the right way to respond to it. Because I think the way Democrats had handled it by putting their head in the sand, created like this layup situation for Republican candidates. And as we were getting closer and closer to the midterms, it was driving me nuts because you don't have to deny that in certain parts of the country, there is a crime spike. You also don't have to immediately abandon any criminal justice reform by simply acknowledging that there is a crime spike. You have to compare the way Democrats would handle the crime spike versus how Republicans would handle it. And the way Republicans would, first of all, they haven't even provided a single solution. They just constantly fear monger about it, but there are no solutions, right? So I have no doubt in my mind that if they took complete charge of, of Congress, uh, complete charge in, in these state elections, uh, the, the issue would continue, it's, it wouldn't get any better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, on that issue, on, on the inflation issue, on all of this stuff that was working against Democrats, I have to say it is miraculous that they did not lose more of these races. And I hope they don't learn all the wrong lessons from that. I hope that you know what Biden said there was sincere and that they are gonna take these issues seriously and respond to them in the way that we would expect progressives to respond to them, you know? Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with you. I would also point out that one thing Biden said in the same speech today, and I'll just read it. He said, I wanna be very clear under no circumstances will I support the proposals put forward to cut or make fundamental changes to social security and Medicare. That's not on the table, I will not do that. Excellent. So I felt very good about him picking that fight because as our polling showed, even those who care about inflation are saying by 15 to one, they want him to pick that fight. And I kind of hope Republicans take the bait and engage us in that fight because they will get crushed. So on Adam, crime, I just gotta tell you, you know, yeah, go for it, go for it. Sorry, last thing here for me. Um, so look, if it's a divided Congress, which it likely will be, they'll at least pick up the House, it seems. Um, number one, uh, what did the Democrats do for two years of the House uh, if they're in the minority? And then uh, as a corollary to that, I mean, last time we interviewed Matt Gates, and he said uh, their answer to inflation is gonna be to try to cut Medicaid. Uh, and to make sure that wages are lower, uh, so because he said wages what? are inflationary. Uh, so I, I, yes. I kind of want to say, have at it, Hoss. <laughs> and then, but yeah. so, what do you think is the right progressive? What should progressives push Democrats to do in those two years? Yeah, I, I hadn't seen the interview, but that's exactly what I was talking about. People who say we need to lower wages, as if somebody rolled up their sleeves, marched to the polls to vote on inflation, and voted to cut their own social security and their own wages. It's a crazy theory of the case, but really it's a Wall Street talking point. It's their definition of inflation um, and Democrats are foolish if they take it. So one, I think we need to pick smart fights. And that's why I'm really glad that this particular fight on social security was picked. Cuz it is one where we don't have to convince voters what that is. Similar to the Obamacare repeal fight, 
you know, if we're on the side of keep social security, if anything expand it, and they're on the side of cut social security, that's a very good symbolic uh, place to pick the fight uh, and make clear just thematically what side, whose side Democrats are are on. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of executive actions that we can take where we don't just thematically pick a fight, but actually get stuff done. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the many many tragic consequences of Joe Manchin, Kristen Cinema, Josh Gottheimer, and the corporate Democrat crew delaying the Democratic economic package for an entire year was that it pushed off Joe Biden using executive action to help people's lives because he didn't want to spook Joe Manchin when he was looking for his vote. Right? It's not an accident that within two weeks of the Inflation Reduction Act passing, canceled student debt happened. Right? They finally had Manchin's vote in the bag, and then they could finally get some big stuff out the door. Well, there's a backlog. Right. I'm very hopeful about the things that Lena Khan at the Federal Trade Commission can do to bust big monopolies and take on corporate power, and what Rohit Chopra at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau can do similarly. You know, just to give two two solid examples. Um, you know, one issue pending before the FTC. Did you know that Burger King workers and McDonald workers have to sign a non-compete clause when they take their jobs, meaning if they want to ask for a one dollar raise? And a McDonald's worker wants to say, you know, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to McDo- I'm going to Burger King. They can't go because they've signed a non-compete. That's crazy. That's probably like a 95 to 5 issue. And that's something before the FTC that would really speak to millions of working class people out there. And then on the CFPB side, you know, to give one, one of many examples of these junk fees that banks do, you know, if I write you a bad check, you cash it, somehow your bank hits you with a fee. Why? Just because they can. Right, there's a bunch of things that they do just because they can that represent really cheating people. And you know, I think if we just weigh in on the side of consumers in a way that puts money in their pocket, um, that will show that Democrats are on the side of working people. And put all that stuff together with the fights we're picking with Congress, the Republican Congress maybe. Well, going to 2024, maybe we get another lease on life for our democracy. So right. that's my theory of the case, what do you think? No, I love it, those are exactly the right things to focus on. Fight on your moral high ground and get things done. So. Uh, excellent advice from Adam Green. Uh, everybody check out PCCC. We'll have the link down below if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook to their organization. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. Yep. Thanks for all you do. Take care. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. We really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.